Blessed be the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. From the one who was, who is, and who is to come, grace and peace be with you all. Let us pray. Most holy God, the earth is filled with your glory, and before you angels and saints stand in awe. Enlarge our vision to see your power at work in the world, and by your grace help us become heralds of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Thank you for your patience as I masked up myself. It takes a little bit of time these days, doesn't it? Good morning. Good morning. I have little in the way of announcements, except uh, that we can always use more door monitors, more people uh, on the Alder Guild, and particularly, as I've learned recently, uh, a regular ministry we have, a monthly ministry, is with Daily Bread, the soup kitchen that's down the street, and the food that we prepare uh, for, that, uh, for that special ministry. Uh, some people have had to bow out, and so we could use more people for that. Simply call the church office if that is a ministry in which you'd like to be involved. Council members that we have for this year, 2022, I ask those of, of you who are currently serving on council, if you would please come forward and just find a place here for yourself in front of the chancel. I think this is actually better representation than we sometimes have at our monthly meetings. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. Dear Christian friends, baptized into the priesthood of Christ, we all are called to offer ourselves to the Lord of the church in thanksgiving for what God has done and continues to do for us. It is our privilege to recognize those who take part in the, work, in the work of this congregation, and among you especially, our leadership. Having offered yourselves in this ministry, in the congregation, I ask, will you follow our Lord's example of humble service? And if so, then please answer, yes, with God's help. Yes, with God's help. O God of love, your son washed the feet of his disciples as a sign of servanthood. Uphold those who follow his example of humble service and strengthen them in their faith. Help us all to do faithfully those deeds of love and mercy expected of your servants. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. What I would like you to do is just turn around for a few moments. And people don't always know who the leaders are in our congregation. We, of course, do have other leaders, but these are the members of the church council. Uh, currently serving as treasurer is Larry Young, and then Keith Stolfus, uh, who I think informally represents the younger members of the congregation, including the children, and is also, yes, he, he said at one of the council meetings recently, talked about himself now being an older person, and we all, we all had to correct him. <laughs> no, that's not the case. Uh, also involved in our music ministry. Uh, our council president, uh, <clears throat> Mark, uh, Mark Gross, who is continuing in his second year now as the president of the congregation and also uh, the chair of our worship and music committee and has been doing a, a wonderful job in those areas as well as more uh, during these past years. And then we have Lynn, Lynn Keller. She is uh, continuing to serve in the area of fellowship and, and other ministries and we thank her for everything that she continues to do. Then we move on to Leslie Yoder. Leslie is one of those people who is willing to serve. And she was on council, I believe, when I first came and uh, served her terms and then, uh, and then was 
we have a limit of two terms. And then she left the council and she agreed uh, to come back uh, and again serve us in that position. And we really appreciate that. Did, did, your, did the fact that you retired in between, did that help? Okay, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, after many years of, of, of being part of uh, the sports program uh, at Suburban High School. And then here we have Barbara Nixon, who is in her second term, and she has served at council president for two years. She's currently serving as secretary and has been involved in any number of activities. And always, Barbara, we are very thankful uh, for your labors of love for this congregation. Here we have uh, Cal Veneta, who also is one of our younger members. You, you didn't know that, did you? Okay, you didn't know that. Um, he serves in different capacities. Uh, he, and I haven't mentioned uh, where everyone uh, is employed, but Cal is a social studies uh, educator at Red Lion School District. And he gives us a, a good perspective on education. And this past fall was uh, one of the, the leaders, one of the facilitators uh, for the adult class. And we, we appreciate everything that you do as well. So uh, I commend you people, look forward to another year of working with you. And we continue now with the reading of the Word of God. A reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among the people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that he had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me, O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. 
do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether that it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fifth chapter. Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When, he, when they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In a college class, I once studied some of the works of a man whose name was William James. A genius, really. Uh, he was a professor for many years at Harvard. And up until uh, the first years of the 20th century, he had very broad interests, at first teaching courses on anatomy and physiology, but soon branching out into other fields, philosophy, psychology. In fact, he is known as the father of American psychology. 
But that wasn't all. He also was interested in the spiritual side of life. His best-known work on that subject is entitled The Varieties of Religious Experience. One chapter is devoted to the general subject of mysticism, another to conversion experiences, and yet another having to do with direct encounters people have had with God or some other such being. For example, this one <clears throat> story as recorded in the book. I had a revelation last Friday evening. I was at the home of a friend and happening to say something about the presence of spirits. My friend entered into an argument with me about spiritual matters. Then, as I was speaking, an overwhelming reality rose up before me from the abyss. I never before so clearly felt the Spirit of God in me and around me. The entire room seemed to be full of God. The entire room seemed to be filled with God. Now again from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Filled the temple. Interesting comparison, isn't it? Yeah. But in Isaiah, we see much, much more. Uh, the presence of the two seraphim with their <clears throat> three pairs of wings, nothing like the angelic cherubs we often see in religious art and, you know, greeting cards, but rather formidable-looking creatures, uh, not only with the wings but other bird-like features, as well as some from other animals and even from humans. Not only beholding those beings with his own two eyes, Isaiah next smells the smoke in the temple. Some kind of incense, maybe? Who knows? And finally, Isaiah's sense of touch, that burning coal applied directly to his lips. Now that is an image. In catechetics class, we have been studying the three major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Ezekiel, <laughs> And Isaiah being, of course, the first of those. When the students read that part about the live coal, they, they took notice. To them, it sounded not only bizarre, but maybe also traumatizing. I explained it was God's way of purifying Isaiah, of preparing him for his call as a prophet. As you've probably noticed, Receiving God's call uh, is the theme not only for that particular reading, but for all three of them today. Not only for Isaiah, but also for Peter and for Paul. I'm sure it's because it's so fitting for this time of year, being the season of Epiphany, uh, and the light of Christ coming into the lives of believers, and then through them into the lives of others. In looking at these passages I noticed uh, two uh, common elements. Uh, the first of them um, being uh, supernatural events, you know, a theophany, uh, the dramatic appearance of God. And the second one is this. In the presence of God, all three of them feel so deeply their inadequacy, their unworthiness, their sinfulness. In our own ways, have we not ourselves sometimes you know, felt like that? You know, that we can't come anywhere close to taking on whatever it is God may lay into our laps? We'll get back to ourselves in a little bit, but, but now I, I, I want us to look uh, some more at Isaiah and then, and then Peter and Paul as well. Unlike most persons God calls in the Bible, once Isaiah's uh, been made clean, he's all set to go. On his part, no hesitation whatsoever. 
right there, still in the temple. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. A bit of a mistake. As soon as he says yes, then God gives him the details. He doesn't really get the job description ahead of time. Isaiah quickly finds out he may have spoken too soon because in the verses that follow, God straight out tells him that the people will end up not listening to him, that their minds will be made dull and their ears, so to speak, will be full of wax. Clearly alarmed, Isaiah says, how long, O Lord, will this be? God's answer, not until things get really, really bad. As one commentator has said, if Isaiah had been more keenly aware of what God wanted from him, he might not have been in the temple. He might have skipped worship that day. Too late to turn back, Isaiah obeys the will of the one who sends him. Like the prophet he now is, he doesn't use a hot coal to purify every individual in the kingdom, but rather empties a big, big bag of coals onto the ground, lights them, and then proceeds to rake all the people over them. And not just once, but many, many times. Thankfully, Isaiah also speaks often of God's steadfast love in some of the most beautiful words found in all of Scripture, like the following that we're accustomed to in the season of Advent and Christmas. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it, with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. Recently, I learned that the book of Isaiah is sometimes called, is sometimes known as the fifth gospel. The fifth gospel. That sounds very appropriate, doesn't it? Does God sometimes call you to speak words of comfort, words of hope to someone who really needs to hear them? Does God perhaps call you in some other ways? Well, it seems that that was the case for Peter. I'm confident somewhere along the line, he too learns how to encourage others. We definitely know God calls him to spread the word and like Jesus also heal others. But at first, he doesn't seem all that likely as a candidate. We do have to give him credit, you know, for taking Jesus out on the boat in the first place so he could more easily uh, talk to the crowd, especially since Peter had been fishing all night. You know, he had to have been very tired, even though he was still out working, you know, cleaning, uh, cleaning the nets. And then for Jesus to say, Take the boat farther out and give it another try. Seems so wrong-headed. Peter is the fisherman. That's what he does for a living. Jesus, besides being an itinerant um, teacher, miracle worker, prophet, he probably knows something about carpentry work. But fishing? Yet out of respect, Peter does as he's told. And when that moment comes, when the nets overflow or are about to break for all the fish caught in them, Peter now knows for sure he is in the presence of someone very, very special. And he chokes. Although not in the temple, you know, Not in the Holy of Holies, you know, filled with the presence of God, but in an everyday place of work. He reacts in exactly the same way as Isaiah. Go away from me, Lord, 
for I am a sinful man. That from someone we could call a man's man, a, a fellow with strong arms and legs and used to hard physical labor, one who knows how to take care of himself. But there he is, falling down at Jesus' knees. Go away from me, Lord. Go away from me. Of course, Jesus does nothing of the kind. He simply says at first, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. That's not the first time in Luke that those words are spoken. When an angel appeared to the priest Zechariah to tell him he and his wife Elizabeth would finally have a baby in their old age, a baby son, John the Baptist, Zechariah was terrified. Fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid. When that same angel appeared to Mary to announce she would bear the Christ child, she also was told, do not be afraid. And when that angel appeared to the shepherds outside Bethlehem, and they too were terrified, they also were told, do not be afraid. And as a little footnote to all of this, it's interesting that Mary is the one who is not terrified, but simply perplexed. A retired pastor um, who had served for many, many years at his former congregation once uh, said to them, many of us Christians are afraid of being evangelists, missionaries, fishing for God. We need to hear and remember his words, do not be afraid. Words with power, words that stand behind us, that give us what we need to share in small ways uh, the faith uh, with which we have been blessed. Doesn't mean it's easy. And it might be helpful to remember, as brave as he was, Peter also had his moments. Last, we turn to the person of Paul. The story of his call is only referred to in today's reading, so just as a refresher, I'll, I'll mention the main parts of it. First, it happened not in the temple or in his workplace, so to speak. Instead, it happened, it happened while he was making, we could say, a business trip. On that road from Jerusalem to Damascus, to round up and throw into prison some more of those followers testifying about the so-called risen one of God. Suddenly, that bright light appears out of nowhere, and falling to the ground, Paul hears a thundering voice. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I am Jesus whom you're persecuting. Get up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things that I will reveal to you. I am sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes, to share with them the light. Blinded by that light, Paul must be led by his servants the rest of the way. He arrives in Damascus at the home of a believer who cares for him. Three days later, he regains his sight and begins his new call. Only later, only later do we read about his own sense of unworthiness and inferiority he feels, uh, seems to feel compared to other leaders in those first years of the church. You may not be aware of it, but as a sign of that, he begins almost all of his letters uh, to the various congregations in his salutation with these words, or ones like them. Paul, 
called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Since he never knew the earthly Jesus like Peter and the others did, he constantly feels a need to claim that his authority, that it's just as genuine and, and as legitimate as theirs. It's obvious he's very sensitive about it, and in fact, often goes overboard, maintaining he's even better at and more devoted to his call than any of the rest, as in today's reading. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I've worked harder than any of the others. <laughs> he says that in, in a number of places. Maybe he does feel superior to them. Maybe not. Maybe it's possible that inside he feels an insecurity that he can never quite shake. I'll tell you, as far as it goes for me, I am only too aware of my uh, own shortcomings, my own inadequacies, my own weaknesses uh, when it, it comes uh, to my call. Over the years, I've come to accept most of them, but some others, even at my age, I can still try to overcome to some degree, still try to compensate for, both as a Christian in general and as a pastor in particular. Now, how about yourselves? In your call as a Christian, in what you do in work, in your career, relationships with colleagues, in more personal relationships, uh, as a friend, as a neighbor, certainly among one's family, although I have a qualifier there, in this day and age, you know, not everyone has a family, at least not in the traditional sense. Sometimes our call, or multiple simultaneous calls, Christians, um, we, we need to know our limits. As an older church member said to me a couple of years ago, right now, my ministry is caring full time for my spouse. And once, many, many years ago, I remember on leaving the home of a shut-in member of a church I was serving, after visiting and giving her communion, I remember her following me to the door, and then as I was almost to my car, calling out to me, and, and she, was a, she was a bit of a character, calling out to me, you know, Pastor, I'm at a point in life when my job is taking care of myself. Taking care of myself. Especially during this time of the pandemic, at least to some degree, that's a call all of us should remember. We need to care for ourselves. And now may the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
In the words of the Apostles' Creed, may we confess our common faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. God of all majesty, we give great thanks for the opportunity to lift praises to you in this service of worship. May we experience your holy presence. May we keep it before us throughout this week. With your inspiration, may we indeed be living temples that testify to your glory. God of grace, your son shared the divine word both on the Sabbath and in everyday world of your people. As he spoke to Peter and others by the sea, on the mountain, and in the homes of many others, may he also speak to us in our daily lives. Bless us with ears to recognize his voice. God of grace, remind us that our worthiness comes not from ourselves, but through the mercy of your Son. No matter where we are in our lives, help us to discern and live out the vocations to which you have called us. During these times, we especially ask that daycare workers may receive the support and encouragement they need to continue their labor of love. In particular, we pray for the staff of our child care center. God of grace, your son turned St. Paul from prosecuting others to loving them. We ask that more people in our own time might do the same. May leaders of repressive regimes be restrained in their mistreatment of their people. May those who harbor ill will towards others, especially those who commit crimes of hate, and realize that each and every one of us is made in your image. May good overcome evil. God of grace, in this earthly ministry, Jesus healed those who were sick and encourage those who were fearful. In our own time, may he grant health and patience to those who suffer in any kind of way. We remember Sonia Boyd, Cindy Cooley, Anne Nata Danner, Terry Hoover, Pat Hose, Richard Meckley, Robin, Schaefer Klinger, from our voices and hearts, we lift to you the names of others. God of grace, 
Since we have such great hope in your promises, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, our sovereign of the universe. You offer us with new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to the hungry world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give a thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We give thanks to we give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all. Strengthen with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Amen.